Hi everyone, it's Chris and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you to everybody who likes, subscribes, watches these videos and especially to the people who regularly comment. Your support is so appreciated. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Now today I'm going to focus on a genre of music that um, I've got quite a few albums in this genre but for some strange reason I've not shared much before. Now recently I shared two albums, one from the 90s and one from the 80s, both of which are loosely in the category of blues. One is Buddy Guy from the 1990s, Damn Right I Got the Blues, and the other one is Live at the Marquee by Nine Below Zero from the 1980s, in fact 1980. And that got me playing some of the 80s and 90s blues albums that I possess in my collection. So I thought what I'd do today is loosely put them in some kind of order and include those two albums in the mix as well. So um, say coming in at last place, it's, it's a loose order, is the comeback album by Lonnie Mack. This is Strike Like Lightning from about 85. It's on Alligator Records. It features uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan, who was a big fan of Lonnie Mack and very influenced by him. And in fact, there's a song that Lonnie Mack did um, way before this called Wham, that um, subsequently Stevie Ray Vaughan did a really good version of it. It's an instrumental and it appears on here as well uh, with Lonnie Mack and Stevie Ray playing together. It's called Dummy, Double Whammy. It's tremendous. It's a real guitar fest and really worth listening to. Stevie Ray, only, only you can hear he's playing, but he only sings on one track. I think that's Falling Back in Love With You, I think. No, if you have to know. Um, and, and that's decent as well. But Double Whammy off that album is tremendous. That's Lonnie Mack, Strike Like Lightning. Next up, an album that's probably not better than that. It's probably its equal, really, but I just go back a long way with this fan. I love his stuff. Um, this is on the cusp of the 80s and 90s because this is a 1980 album and it's Victims of the Fury by, by Robin Trower. Robin Trower, originally in Procol Harum, went on to a, you know, a decent solo career, had some absolutely stellar blues rock albums, really did. This isn't really one of them. It's OK. It's the last album with the classic lineup of Robin Trower on guitars, Bill Lorden on drums and James Dewa on bass and vocals. And what a voice he had. Just a beautiful voice, James Dewa. I was lucky to see this incarnation of Robin Trower's band live and they were fantastic. And it's very distinctive, Robin Trower. He has a particular guitar tone and sound which is very distinctive. The title track is probably for me the highlight, Victims of the Fury, 1980 Robin Trower. Next up, a uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan link because this is his brother Jimmy Vaughan and this is the Fabulous Thunderbirds, their second album on Chrysalis Records, uh, What's the Word, which is just good fun. It's kind of authentic rhythm and blues, lots of um, harmonica from this guy here. Uh, whose names escape me, Kim Wilson. And uh, yeah, it's a decent album. A good rhythm section from these two fellas here. It's a good time rock and roll, really, um, but with a real blues kind of angle. So uh, enjoyed that. Fabulous Thunderbirds. And what well, this is from 1980, I think. Uh, and that's What's the Word? Um, some, uh, let's just try and pick out a, a song. Um, I'm a good man if you give me a chance. It's worth streaming. It's a great song. Uh, next up is a Canadian fella, um, I think he's Canadian anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, and it's Colin James, and I think this is his debut album, and this is from probably the mid-80s, fairly young here, and you can tell by the hair what the, the music might be, it is quite up-tempo, um, kind of rock and roll stuff, but with a blues kind of twist, it's a decent album actually, I really like it, Voodoo Things, a good track on here, um, you know, it's got some it's very, as a lot of 80s, um, a lot of 80s on Virgin Records, a lot of 80s and 90s albums are, you know, Five Long Years, Voodoo Thing, very polished, Why July, which I think might have been kind of, if you like, the hit from here. Um, but um, yeah, decent album, I say very well produced, playing is, is uh, very, very good, but it's, a, it's possibly a little bit clean sounding. Um, but an enjoyable listen, and I think he's a Canadian fellow. The next guy is uh, an American who, um, his first album, uh, which I do have, is a much more kind of jazz fusion album, and in fact he played with a band called Yellow Jackets, which were a fusion band, but this is his blues album, one of his blues albums, and 
Uh, I really like it. It's a good album. It's called Talk to Your Daughter by Robin Ford. Again, like Colin James, it's got that kind of clean sound to it, but this is more bluesy. There is a bit of fusion-y kind of stuff in here. Revelation, for example, which is a, a good, uh, good track. But he does a cover of Help the Poor, the B.B. King song, and Albert King's Born Under a Bad Sign, which I probably don't need to hear another version of it, but it's not. It's quite decent. Um, so Ain't Got Nothing But The Blues is a, is a good track. So it, it's certainly worth hearing. But again, it's that very 80s, uh, clean sounding blues. OK, next up is a guy who I think this is possibly his last album and his early stuff in the 70s is far, far better. But a tremendous guitarist and highly, highly underrated. And that's Roy Buchanan. This is Hot Wires from 85 on Alligator Records. Now... Roy um, Buchanan, sadly, not long after this album, I think, committed suicide. I think he hung himself, sadly. Um, but he was a proper good player. Proper good player. And there's some glimpses of that, without a doubt, on here. Yes, it has got that kind of 80s production. It's very clean. The drum sound is very 80s sounding. But the playing on it in things like flash chording and especially things like country boogie are just fantastic. The only thing I always have with... Um, Roy Buchanan sometimes is a guitar tone sometimes can be so shrill it goes right through you sometimes but Hot Wires is is fairly decent is it his best album nowhere near but it's a back catalogue worth looking out for but you know uh, Country Boogie just stream that one it's good uh, next up is a, a guy who's just phenomenal he's he's not with us any any longer I think he did a couple of albums this is his first He's phenomenal because he's a great singer and he's a great guitar player, but he's even more phenomenal because he is blind. And that's Jeff Healy, and this is See the Light, and this is from 1985. Um, I think this did reasonably well for him. This is a uh, an album that mixes kind of originals um, and um, uh, cover songs, so he does a uh, version of ZZ Top's Blue Jean Blues, which is nowhere near as good as that version, which is amazing, but it's decent. Hideaways on here. So there's a cover, but there's some really, really good songs. There's the track list in there. It's a good album and, and really worth um, worth you finding out. I think that's Jeff Healy and See the Light. Again, very, very smooth production. This is a guy who, who epitomised the smooth 80s production, but the album I'm choosing is his first one. I think the albums uh, that he produced after this get, get much more higher praise. They're probably Grammy winning. Um, one called Bad Influence, one called Strong Persuader, uh, both of which are incredibly clean blues rock albums. But for me, this is the most bluesy of his albums. Uh, and it's the first one called Who's Been Talking, which may look different to the version you if you've got this album, because this is a reissue and it's in slightly different um, cover. But it's got um, some covers and it's got some originals on here as well. The majority are covers. I think it's about three original songs on here. But, um, you know, I'd Rather Be a Wino is a great song. Too Many Cooks uh, is a Willie Dixon song, which is, has got a really nice kind of rumba rhythm to it. But the guitar playing is great. It's more bluesy, I think, than these other albums. And for me, that gets my vote for my favourite Robert Cray album. Next up is a guy who I think recorded on Motown and one of the very few blues artists to do so. This is a guy whose albums in the early 70s are probably his best albums, things like Love Me Mama, which is a great album. This is Luther Allison and this is Power Wire Blues, a live album which features quite a lot of covers, but decent versions of things like Sweet Home Chicago, Dust My Broom. Uh, I'm going to leave you alone is probably the highlight for me. Uh, going down another cover version but you know decent singer great guitar player in the live setting he really does cut loose so that's that's half decent that's uh, on uh, Charlie Records that's from 1985 Luther Allison next up is a guy who again um, this is um, quite smoothy sounding we've got a lot of horns sax and horns and so on in here this is Johnny Copeland and this is Copeland Special this is um, on Rounder Records. Uh, again, decent album. If you like that kind of smooth end of blues, well produced. Um, uh, so, uh, Everybody Wants a Piece of Me is probably my favourite. Claim Jumper is pretty good. 
a really nice album, good singer, great guitar player, again, suffers a little bit from that kind of uh, well-produced kind of blues sound, but good album. Got to include the next guy somewhere, although obviously his heyday was in the 60s and definitely the 70s with a couple of absolutely stellar live albums, one at the County Jail and one at uh, the Regal. Of course, this is B.B. King. Uh, and this is an album that came out at Ace Records in 85. It's called King of the Blues Guitar, and it is uh, eight instrumentals. Um, again, we've got that horns, and we've got that kind of a little bit of a smooth 80s sound, but the guitar playing on it is fantastic. You know, you don't get his vocals, which is a shame, because I think B.B. King's got a beautiful voice, but his guitar playing is wonderful on here, and that's worth listening to. That's, that's pretty good. And there's a whole host of songs on there which are worthy of your attention. Next up is a band who um, I nearly didn't include them um, because they're more blues rock than blues, but they're very blues influenced. And, and this is a tremendous debut album. Uh, this is from 90, I think 1990 or 91, probably 1990, on uh, Deaf American Records. This is Shake Your Money Maker, The Black Crows. Good album, Twice As Hard, Jealous Again, uh, Hard To Handle, the Otis Redding song. She Talks to Angels is beautiful. Um, you know, is it really blues? No, probably not. Is it blues rock? Yeah. Is it a great album? Yeah, it is. And I think it's really worth listening to. As I said, the big songs from here, probably the best songs on here. I love She Talks to Angels. It's a tremendous song. But good album from um, The Black Crows. It, yeah, I think it's 1990. Uh, next up, this is a debut album from a guy who uh, has gone on to produce a whole host, still performing now, uh, this is Walter Trout Band and Life in the Jungle. This is his debut album, and it's strange because it's half live and half studio, but there are some really good songs on it. So he does a cracking version of Red House. It's not up to Jimi Hendrix standard, but it's pretty good. Cold, Cold Feeling is decent as well. Serve Me Right to Suffer is good as well, but there's some really good, what, some really wonderful guitar playing on this album. This guy can really play. So that's Walter Trout Band and Life in the Jungle. In the Jungle, just uh, stream Serve Me Right to Suffer. Good stuff. Next up is a collaboration from three guys, two of which I mentioned already, Johnny Copeland and Robert Cray, and they team up with Albert Collins on Showdown, which is, uh, I think, you know, a tremendous 80s blues album. Very smooth, again, very polished, but incredibly well done. These, these three guys can really, really play. They can all sing too. And, and T-Bone Shuffle, which starts off, the album features all of them um, on, um, on uh, vocals as well as guitar, is, is fantastic. So T-Bone Shuffle from the album Showdown, certainly worth listening to. So that's tremendous stuff. That's on uh, Sonnet Records. Quite a lot of these on Sonnet and Alligator. I think in the States it's Alligator. Over here in the UK it's Sonnet Records. Next up is uh, an album which I showed recently, uh, and so um, I'll show it again. Buddy Guy, Damn Right I Got the Blues. This is from 91. It's on Silvertone Records. Um, it's got a version of Must Mustang Sally. Don't need a version of that, but there's some great stuff on here. His guitar playing is really on point, as it always is. He, he packs so much into a solo, but it's still understated. Um, it's, it's just beautiful player he's also got a fantastic voice buddy guy a really brilliant voice and it's interesting they they show him as a singer on the front because his voice is absolutely the highlight i think of this album this is an album that features mark knopfler and jeff beck and eric clapton on here as well damn right i got the blues the the opening track fantastic stuff uh, a couple of CDs here. Um, so um, I'm not sure, I don't know much about this guy other than the fact that when he recorded this album he was very young and this isn't his debut. He recorded his debut when he was uh, about 16. It's a guy called Johnny Lang and his first album features an instrument, and I don't have it, it's an instrument, well, his first album has an instrument called Smoking, which is just smoking. It's absolutely brilliant and that's worth streaming. And this album is really good as well. Again, it's that well-produced, Johnny Lang, Lie to Me, really good albums, um, really good album, lots of really good tracks on here. Um, 
you know, Matchbox, Lie to Me, Good Morning Little School Girl. So there's a, there's a, a, mix, a mix of covers and so on here, but that is it's well produced. The playing is fantastic. There's a lot of up tempo stuff on it as well as blue, you know, blue stuff, but it's really, really good album. Uh, so that's excellent. As is this guy. I don't know much about him, but I think this is his debut and it's very, very good. Uh, this is from. Oh, 19, I was going to say 85 again, but it might be, it might be later than that. It might be in the, no, this is probably the 90s, I think. Oh, I can't, I can't see and I, I don't, can't remember. But it's Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Uh, and this is his debut album, I think, called Led Better Heights. Now, this is a really good album as well. It starts off with a song called um, Born With A Broken Heart, and you almost could be forgiven for thinking it was a Stevie Ray Vaughan album. Deja Voodoo is fantastic, but you know, Stream Shame, Shame, Shame is a great blues song. Uh, Everybody Gets the Blues, also good. So there's some tremendous stuff on there. This guy's a seriously good player. Uh, I need to explore his back catalogue a little bit more, but that's a tremendous debut from Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Next up, we've got... Um, uh, an album from a band that I've shown before. I've showed this album before. This is British band, uh, Nine Below Zero. This is their debut album recorded live at the Marquee. Um, this is just great fun. It is really well produced. Feels like you're there. Um, it's got a lot of covers on it. So Wooly Bully is on here. Um, got My Mojo Workings on here. I Can't Quit Your Babies on here, but Stop Your Nagging, which is an original, is fantastic, and that's really worth streaming. That's on A&M Records, and, and that's um, Nine Below Zero from Recorded at the Marquee in 1980. Brilliant stuff from them. Uh, this is uh, one of, um, there aren't many um, 80s and 90s albums from Rory Gallagher, uh, but this is a 1980s album from him. This is, eight, I think, 80, possibly 82, 83. This is Jinx. More of a blues rock album. Now, I think Rory Gallagher is better playing the blues than anything. And um, I remember seeing him live, and I didn't get him until I saw him live in 1980. And then I absolutely got him. He plays a guitar like it's part of him. It, it's just phenomenal. He hardly ever looks at his guitar. It just seems absolutely effortless. And he was just a brilliant, brilliant player. Great singer too. And this is quite a blues rock album rather than a blues album. Uh, but Signals, The Devil Made Me Do It, Big Guns, very um, blues rock, um, as is Bourbon. Uh, Jinxed, kind of the title track, is a really good track and that's probably worth streaming. But one of my favourite latter day um, Rory Gallagher albums, so Jinx from 1983-2, that's on Chrysalis Records. Next up is an album I played the other day. I'd completely forgotten I had this and I just found it in the garage alongside those other CDs I've just shown you. Uh, and it's uh, Paul Rogers, Muddy Water Blues. I remember buying this in these kind of early 90s, probably a 92 album, something like that. Got, it's got two CDs on it. It's got some re-recordings of um, Bad Company and Free Songs, so new versions of All Right Now, Wishing Well, so on, which, are, which are pretty decent. But the um, this one is a lot of blues covers. Uh, Muddy Waters was a uh, a big influence on Paul Rogers. And Paul Rogers' voice on this, as you can imagine, is just brilliant. And then he employs a load of really smart players. So we've got Jeff Beck, Dave Gilmore, Buddy Guy, Brian May, Steve Miller, um, Trevor Rabin, Richie Sambora, Neil Schoen, Brian Set uh, Setzer, Slash, who plays on The Hunter on here. And my favourite song on here features Gary Moore, and, and that song is She Moves Me. So that's really worth listening to, I think. It's a good album, a really good album. If you like Paul Rogers, you love it. You probably love it anyway. But if you like his voice and you haven't heard it, worth, worth listening to. Next up is uh, a mid-80s album from a guy who probably made his name more in the late 60s, early, early 70s. Had issues with drugs and with, with drink. And so his output was less prolific in the 80s. But this is a great blues album. This is Guitar Slinger by Johnny Winter, which again is on Alligator uh, and Sonnet Records. 
really, really good album. Uh, Mad Dog, fantastic stuff. He is a tremendous guitar player, but you know, ravaged by drink and drugs over the years, uh, which kind of curtailed his playing to some extent. He was always kind of like the great white hope almost and, and uh, never quite materialized uh, for him. But this is a really good album, very 80s from 84, I think it is, but a tremendous album. You know, just stream Mad Dog, great stuff from Johnny Winter. Another CD. So we're in the top sort of five or so albums, I think, of the 80s and 90s blues. This is a bit of a cheat because none of the songs come from the 80s and 90s, but it's a 94 compilation of a guy playing his blues songs. And the album is Blues by Jimi Hendrix. This is absolutely brilliant. Came out on Polydor on CD in 1994. And it's absolutely brilliant. It has a stellar version of uh, Born Under the Bad Side and his, obviously his great song, Red House. Um, Voodoo Child Blues is fantastic. Manic, uh, Manic, Manish Boy is on here as well. But Electric Church, Red House, six minutes long. Fantastic. As is Heard My Train Coming, which is a really long song. But there we are. Jimi Hendrix Blues, strictly not an 80s and 90s blues album, but it came out in 1990. So I'm having it tremendous. That's been in the garage for a long time. I was glad to find that and play that the other day. Um, so we've got, how many have we got left? We've got um, five left. You've got to include this guy somewhere. His stuff from the 60s and 70s were again his, his best, but this guy is legendary in the blues world. And this is a fantastic album. Uh, John Lee Hooker, Boom Boom. So this has got Boom Boom, I'm Bad Like Jesse James, Sugar Mama. It's you know, a song called Boogie at Russian Hill, which is just brilliant. Um, I think this is an album that, because he played with several um, sort of famous names over the years. This has got uh, Jimmy Vaughan on it. It's also got uh, Robert Cray on it. This has also got Albert Collins. He plays on Boogie at Russian Hill, which is, for me, one of the picks of it. Um, but just some John Hammond is playing on here. It's a tremendous blues album, and I just love the kind of the boogie nature of John Lee Hooker. Yeah, is it as good as his 60s and 70s stuff? No, absolutely isn't. But is it good fun? Yeah, brilliant. Talking of good fun, this is tremendous. You know, if you can't tap your foot to this, you have no soul. This is the official uh, blues band bootleg album, live album. Oh, it's just brilliant. Blues band, kind of uh, born out of the ashes of things like Manfred Mann, McGuinness Flint. Um, this is Paul Jones, the main main guy in it. Um, just tremendous album. Talk to me, baby's brilliant. Someday, baby, brilliant. Just such good fun, such good up tempo blues numbers. As I said, if you can't, you know, tap and and stuff to this, then I, I don't know if you like music. It's just brilliant. I love it. Uh, next up is a live album from one of the key players, I think, of the blues kind of genre, really, and that's Albert Collins. Is it his best? No, it's not, but it's a tremendous album. This is Frozen Alive. Again, it's on Alligator and Sonic Records from 1981, so just in the bracket of 80s and 90s. A great album. Uh, I got that feeling, cold cuts, things I used to do. Yeah. This guy can sing and he can play. Wow, can he play. Can, he really knows his way around a Telecaster. Fantastic stuff. Uh, top two. Top two. Um, first one, a little bit of a nostalgic pick because I remember seeing this guy live. He played with Thin Lizzy, Irish fella. Um, he's just a tremendous player. He could play all genres. He could play fusion. He could play rock. Uh, he could play the blues. And this is his like, blues album, really. Gary Moore, still got the blues. I love the cover with you know, the little kid with all the influences, records and posters, playing his guitar, and there is Gary Moore in a hotel with, his, again, CDs, his influences around him still. Just a tremendous album. This, you know, the title track, Still Got the Blues, is just brilliant. Walking By Myself, the cover of that, amazing. Uh, it's got Albert Collins playing a little cameo on this, on Two Tired, which is fantastic. Got some great players, including Don Airy, um, Brian Downey, Thin Lizzy, one singly the most underrated drummer of all time. He plays on here, fantastic. Um, Nicky Hopkins plays on here. There's some just great songs. Still Got the Blues is brilliant. Texas Strike is fantastic. Walking By Myself, wow. Walking By Myself is just one of the best songs he ever played on. It's amazing. And then we've got the top one. So the top album is by a guy who kind of 
I think almost brought blues back to the masses. This guy is one of the greatest players. Life was cut short by a plane crash, I believe. He had issues with drink and drugs, which again curtailed his output a little bit and his playing at some points. But this is his debut album alongside his band Double Trouble, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Texas Flood. This is a monumental blues album. I've got loads of CDs and records by him, and this is probably my favourite. Uh, it's the first one I ever bought, and, and I love it. So, Love Struck Baby, Pride and Joy, brilliant. Uh, Testify and Rude Mood are just fantastic instrumentals. The guitar playing is out of this world on those. A track called Lenny is very kind of fusiony and jazzy. That's brilliant. But the song Texas Flood, there's a brilliant video of him playing Texas Flood live where he plays guitar behind his back. I think one of the strings goes and he carries on playing. It's just brilliant. This guy was just a master of the blues guitar absolutely stunning and that's a brilliant album and that's probably my favorite album from the 80s and the 90s when it comes to blues so tell me what you think i'm sure i've missed out some albums like all collections it's it's you know there isn't uh, there's a finite number of albums that i have and i may well be missing some pretty key ones tell me what they are and i'm sure at some point i'll add them to my collection as well thank you very much for watching i'm sure i'll be back sometime with another video take care cheers